Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays Gods Will Be Watching. Let's resume. So when we laugh, last left, no laughing, when we last left uh, Jack and Sergeant Burden here, they were tied up, uh, you know, lethal weapon style to these chairs, being interrogated by what appears to be a very muscular Judge Dredd, or maybe Bane from the Joel Schumacher Batman and Robin film, uh, as well as perhaps a Final Fantasy villain. In any case, I'm going to explain the kind of systems that we've got going on here. We have a few actions. We can provoke, beg, think, lie, or confess. We have a certain number of truths that we're trying not to tell, basically. I think there's five or six, like, admissions that we don't want to make. Um, if we confess, one of those is knocked off immediately. Now, if we provoke, it guarantees that we'll be hit. When we get hit, we take physical damage. We can die if we take physical damage. So those are the two ways that we fail. Either we take too much physical damage and we die, or we confess all of our truths and then they have no reason to keep us alive and it's all over, I think. Um, so provoking will take physical damage, but if we provoke with, like, Jack, because you can split it up based on the unit here, if we provoke with Jack, Jack will take a little bit more physical damage than Burden will, I think, and vice versa. Begging is something that we can do if we're low on an HP. This gives us a percentage chance that they'll give us some time to recuperate. As time goes on, we heal a little bit, and begging is basically just asking for a heal turn to bide some time. Uh, thinking increases our lie percentage, and um, our lie percentage is basically our percentage that our lie will be successful. So if we tell a successful lie, um, then we get a turn to recuperate our HP a little bit, and they don't- they stop pressing us for that particular issue. So what we want to do is basically just survive as long as possible by killing time. Each day is, you know, anywhere between like, six and ten turns, and we just want to not die. So my general strategy for this, this is a hard level, and it, it gets harder because the rules change as time goes on. Uh, but my general strategy for this level is to take a lot of physical damage, but always have like a really high percentage lie chance when you go into the next day. So typically I will start with just like a think, maybe, and then uh, Irving will say, hey, are you deaf? And they'll punch us in the face a little bit, and then he'll continue asking questions. But we're just going to continue to think here, and the reason we're going to do this is because pretty much um, I can get my lie percentage nearly up to 100, and I actually reasonably have found this mission pretty easy so far, even though I, I just said it was hard, but once I figured out the pattern, I was able to do it uh, repeatedly, but that's what I said for the first mission as well, it didn't work out that well. So, what would you lousy, or what would some lousy rebels like you do with our precious data? I'm gonna take a turn to beg. Begging is basically a free turn in my mind. Okay, I don't think I can resist much longer. He says perhaps you aren't familiar with the concept of torture, so yes, yeah, sometimes begging can go wrong, but we're gonna beg again, and this, this day will be over pretty soon. Alright, so they're punching me. Uh, and we're not in a great position, but I'm going to continue begging just on the off chance that he accepts um, our call for mercy. Now, as you can see, we're nearly dead here. Uh, I could confess and keep my lie percentage chance. I could lie, and then I'll probably go into tomorrow with a 0% lie percentage chance, which is bad. But overnight, because they'll abandon us pretty soon, we'll heal. So I'm actually going to try um, like a provocation with Jack here. And that means Burden won't take any more damage. Yeah, okay. There we go. So he says, Jack, stop. Or, Alexander, stop. Look at what time it is. We'll miss the Holistic Baseball League. Gentlemen, you'll have to excuse us. I hope you enjoyed your first session. So I take it pretty much day by day. I just try to keep myself alive. As time goes on, you'll gain uh, a little bit more HP, like, w overnight. Not a lot, but a little bit. Jack says, so, you think we've been through worse than this? We're alive, aren't we? For now, let's just focus on staying that way. Okay, until when? I don't know, but as long as we're still breathing, we have a chance. Don't do or say anything stupid. We have to choose our words wisely. I don't care about giving up information about Xenolifer, but as soon as that lunatic knows everything he wants, we're dead. Yeah, it sounds like a solid plan. Shut up and get some rest. The worst is yet to come. Yeah, so we've, we've made it through day one. Now, there is going to be a little bit of a twist that comes. I don't think we need to survive fully for 20 days, by the way, but... Um it, it, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Good morning! Ready for your next session? You know, this is a tough job, torturing people. I mean, I enjoy it, but it's harsh, you know? The most difficult part is when it becomes boring. Let me tell you, designing fun torture routines is a pain in the ass. It's like an old marriage, really. You start thinking of new ways to surprise your little darling. And without even noticing it, you end up dressed up as a sailor, with a strap on, banging at your back door. You know, I've never been married, but Alexander was. You should listen to one of his ex's stories, man. But hey, let's talk about you. Alright. So our HP is a little bit better. Depending on which weapon Irving and Alexander use, uh, it can do more damage. Now the hammer doesn't do that much more damage than the fists, but when they start pulling our teeth, we're gonna have a problem. 
So I think I'm going to try to, again, just bide as much time as possible. We'll take Jack's turn to beg. And uh, that, unfortunately, as you can see, didn't work out very well for us. And they're going to attack us. Um, he's not spitting blood. Oh, he is spitting blood. I think we should maybe take our 95% lie chance now in this situation. So we'll lie. We wanted to fund our cause by selling classified information. It makes sense, doesn't it? I don't know. Next question. So our lie was successful. Where are your headquarters? I think we will take a turn to... Um... Man, this is actually like a pretty difficult situation. I think I'll take a turn to think. And he says, hey, are you deaf? Now the question is like how many... Uh steps downwards physically does this take us it, it takes us nearly to death um so we can take a turn to beg but if it goes wrong then we'll end up being killed so i may actually end up just wanting to confess this time as much as i hate the idea of doing so because a beg is really like a binary if something goes if, if it doesn't work out for us then we lose immediately so i'm going to confess this one we handle our departures from our mothership undefeated for seven years, so don't even try. Interesting. So you live on board a spaceship, always on the run. That's how cowards roll, I guess. So, but there's still things that bug me. So I had to make a concession there. I confess something. What were you looking at in our labs? Uh, I'm going to take a think here. And um, that's going to up our lie chance. Remember, I want to keep a high lie chance for tomorrow, so I have kind of a get-out-of-jail-free card. Um, nobody's doing that great right now. So I could take like a 67% lie chance, which I think is actually not a terrible idea here. Let's try it. We wanted to steal all the intel we could from the Holistic Empire. Information is power. It makes sense, doesn't it? I don't know. Next question. Alexander, it's time for our secret weapon. Bring me the red blade crabs. No. Wait. We had them for dinner yesterday. Shit. Sorry, Buzzkiller. See you tomorrow. Okay, so we survived another day. In hindsight, I wish that we had not used our lie there, but that's okay. We survived and our HP is relatively good. Why do we choose this life of suffering? Why can't we just live on a farm with warm sunsets and cool evenings? We'd harvest crops and be away from all this. We can. Well, we should. But I'll tell you something. I'm sure that even if we survived this, you'd go back to the action. And the fool that I am, I'd follow you. Can't be helped, Jack. We don't know shit about raising crops. That's yeah, it's kind of insulting to farmers, isn't it? Why don't we just become farmers? Doesn't take any skill to do that. What an asshole. All right, so Liam is broken in here. Sorry I'm so late. You didn't think Xenolifer would let you down now, did you? Thanks to the gods, get us out of here. I'm sorry, but that's not a good idea. We're in a prison located in one of the wandering moons of the Holistic Empire. This giant rock is too heavily guarded for a prison break. It's a miracle I got this far. I don't think we can make it together. Hell, even I don't know if I can make it back alone. Well, then grab a chair and take a seat. What's the plan? I know you have one, Liam. Well, you're correct. I may be a suicidal hero, but I'm not a suicidal idiot. Xenolifer is preparing a rescue operation. It isn't going to be easy... But nothing withstands a clever plan. So he's going to give us, uh, he's going to try a prison escape, or a prison break for us. Right, what do you need us to do? I need you to endure 20 more days of torture. You know, clever plans usually aren't the quickest, but that's why I'm here to help you in that matter. I already located a nursery above this floor. I can sneak in and steal medication for you. Medicine can restore your health so you can endure longer. So we can get a health kit every day if we want to that can make us um, more resilient, basically. Painkillers will allow you to resist more pain, so the bastard's torture methods won't be as effective, which is really important uh, for days when they're going to use like high damage torture tools like wrenches to take out our teeth. But you won't recover as fast as usual from your injuries, or if you prefer, I can gather information to help you deal with your torturers. This basically gives us an automatic 100% lie chance. It's easier to lie if you know what your captor is interested in. You're a smart man, man Abraham. You can survive this and more. Uh, so what should I bring? So let's think about this. It's a little bit like chess, right? We gotta think about what position we're in right now. We have a 0% lie chance right now, but with a confession, I can probably get that up to 100 for the next situation. We're gonna have the wrenches coming next, which means painkillers won't get here in time. So I think we take a healing kit, and usually I like to alternate uh, between healing kit and information. So I get 100% lie chance. Then, once that lie is exhausted, I, I'll have to survive for a time to think my way, my way back to 100%. And then, um, I get healed because you take damage when you're trying to think your way to 100%. Of course, raise your hands if you want to be free. Untie me and I will raise your teeth up into your brains. Alexander, seems like we have a mad dog on our hands here. You want to play mad dog? Me too. Let me give it a shot. So, wrenches are a, a real problem here. Um, two hits from a wrench and we'll be killed, I think. So I think we take our first turn and we just think. We may end up having to confess here, I'll admit. Hey, are you deaf? Um, teeth are going to be pulled here. If Jack gets killed, we, we die, by the way. But this is a, a shorter day than usual. 
My name is Irving McAllister, see? It's not that complicated, so... Um, I'm gonna... I'm gonna confess this one. I am Abraham Burden, my partner is Jack Maslow, we are ex-soldiers from the Constellar Federation. Interesting, so, you live on board a spaceship, always on the run, that's how cowards roll, I guess. You are Abraham Burden and Jack Maslow, old dogs from the Constellar Federation. But there are things that still bug me. Who is your boss? So we're gonna get HP back here. So I almost just want to take a turn to maybe beg and keep ourselves alive, but if not, we might have to confess a third time. Please stop or I'll die. Okay, okay, we have plenty of time, take a breath. Okay, good. So that, that gives us enough time to take a turn to think, and then maybe beg again. So he said, uh, tell me everything about your leader. Instead, I'm going to think here. Hey, are you deaf? Okay. We're in a bad position. That might be the end of the day, though. Who is your leader, and what is he planning? Oh, I'm going to take a turn to beg. It's a, it's a tricky one, because we could lie. We could confess. But I, I like our begging chance here, so I'm going to take it. I don't think I can resist much longer. Okay, we have plenty of time to take a breath. Good. Your leader's name is something like Crappy Rebel, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so now, again, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to keep everybody alive. But I'm going to use a, a turn to actually get Jack to provoke Alexander so Burden doesn't get hit. Because you can tell just by their position on the chairs that he's a little bit weaker, I think. Or at least shorter. So, do you get tired from your job at the circus? Live. Wait! I forgot to get the ice cream out of the fridge. Goodbye, idiots. Come on, Alexander. Choke on it, asshole. Good. Okay, so the day's over. That's one of the riskiest days. So we've made some good progress there. I feel pretty good about it. Now, remember, we'll have a healing kit coming. So everybody's going to be good on HP here. Uh, Jack said, I'm afraid of the wall. Is that some kind of metaphor? No, man. The fucking wall with the chains in front of me. It's hard spending all night looking at that shit and imagining myself hanging on it. I'm more afraid of the axe. Yeah, uh, you know, admittedly, both of those could pose a little bit of a problem. Alright, so Liam comes back. Sorry for the delay, are you okay? As long as you don't get caught, we might stand a chance. Nice, they won't catch me, I promise. What should I bring you? So now we're gonna be healed, and we have a pretty good lie chance. So I say we take uh, information, and we get, uh... We'll get 100% lie chance, so we can burn a lie this time, and burn a lie next time. Alright, so he's gonna use his healing kit, uh, and uh, that's gonna make everybody feel a lot better. Good, we're, we're basically at full HP again. Okay. So, we have settled into a nice equilibrium here. That's an important thing in, in Gods Will Be Watching, I think. Alright, so now they have a, a flamethrower, which is not great. But this actually gives us a little bit more freedom for maneuvering. You might be surprised. You may be thinking, how does somebody end up being a torturer? And I don't like that question. It implies that being a torturer is bad. But, you know, torture is an art. I descended from a proud legacy of professional torturers. Torture is not plain violence. Sometimes it isn't even violent at all. Animals don't practice torture. Torture was a craft invented by man. A craft honed to perfection by countless guys like you and me. Torture is an intimate matter between two people. There's always a profound bond between the torturer and the victim. Because, you know, I'll be the last friend you'll have in this life. So I recommend that you enjoy that ride. So, what's your leader's name? It's just a name. It won't hurt anybody but you. So... This is a bit of a tricky one, I think, because we can take a free action here, but I really have no need to... Oh, you know what? This is an easy one. We think. We think on our first turn because we don't have a 100% lie chance. So what that means is that they're going to hold this, um, the, like this possibility of being burned over top of us right now. Now, if this actually touches us, it's obviously going to do a lot of damage. Um, but I think we can just have somebody absorb all of the damage. Like, if I provoke with Jack right now, he'll get burned. Don't be shy, now show me what those big ape hands can do. And will this get us out of sync here? Good, it did! Um, getting us out of sync is actually awesome because I can buy so much free time like this. I can just have Jack provoke again, and he'll say, don't be shy, show me what those big ape hands can do. And, um, basically just by doing this, I can just alternate and go back and forth between them, and, uh, Keep, keep people alive. So I could provoke with burden quickly. Wait, what are we getting from this one? We're getting information. So we shouldn't be afraid to lie, because if we don't use our lie, then we're gonna be at 100% uh, lie on the next level anyway, so it would be stupid not to use it and save ourselves some damage at some point. Um, but we are gonna heal a little bit overnight anyway. So my thinking is maybe we um, provoke with burden this time. Alright, so come on, weakling. Unleash the fun. That's gonna hurt us a little bit, as you can tell. Um, but then, we get a free turn, not necessarily a free turn, but a, a turn to beg, and only Jack will take damage if this goes wrong. Please stop or I'll die. 
Perhaps you aren't familiar with the concept of torture. And this is fine. I expected something like that to happen. Uh, because now I basically have a free lie chance. So we're going to take our 100% lie chance. Our leader is Brian Kernsmith, also known as the Empire Destroyer. It makes sense, doesn't it? I don't know. Next question. Who do you work for? So now we have a brief window. Uh, Jack's got a little bit less HP than me. But there's no reason to really think because we're going to have a 100% lie chance next turn anyway. But maybe we could think on this turn. And uh, they're going to threaten us here. And I can either provoke or beg. I think it kind of makes sense to... Or we could think. But I think it makes sense to provoke with burden, actually, and take a little damage. Alright, so he's not in a great place. Well, you'll have to excuse us now. Good. That's all I wanted to do, basically, was survive. We are meeting these two hot new trainees. Oh, that reminds me. I'll probably kill you soon. If the date goes smoothly, I'm going to need that chain wall. Alright, so we survived maybe with a little less P, uh, HP than I would have hoped. But, um, we'll get a full lie chance uh, on the next one anyway. Why are all torturers this psycho? I don't think that empathy is a valued virtue for this line of work. Fair enough. We're, we're getting through the gauntlet here. Not quite 20 days, but making progress nonetheless. Good news, I received an encrypted message from our guys and they say they'll be here sooner than we thought. Good work. They'll be here in just 19 days. A day is a day, isn't it? Thanks, Liam. Alright, what should I bring you? This time we're going to need a healing kit. I like alternating back and forth between them. They seem to be pretty paranoid about rebels and resistance initiatives. So that's the information that we got. So let's see what uh, piece of information, or what, what um, torture device they're using today. So they're using the wall. Man, I had a, the weirdest dream last night. Get this, everything was black and white. Everything but the orange light of my cigarette. Oh, and I wasn't blonde, kind of lame. I was wearing a heavy metal t-shirt and had long hair. I lived in a world made of concrete and got to see people with black bags over their heads every day. The best part is that Alexander didn't exist, no offense. And I tortured every single one of those black bag heads. It was fun, but then one day this strange hobo with a green-eyed gas mask showed up and said, Your world was made in less than 72 hours. Hey, snap out of it and start hitting us, please. Alright. Um, so again, we have a 100% lie chance here. The problem is that if Jack takes, like, two damage, he's gonna get torn up. So he doesn't get three. He only gets two. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is try to beg first. Irving, you're close to killing me. Okay, okay, take. we got plenty of time. This is good, because I want to stay high on HP. Because if I stay high on HP, I can provoke, and that means Jack might not get torn up. But if we make two mistakes, then Jack will get torn up. Uh, so I think we provoke, and worst case scenario, this puts us in the same position HP-wise. Get started, I'm falling asleep over here. So he's going to hit me a little bit. As long as I'm not coughing blood, which I'm not, we're going to beg again. Irving, you're close to killing me. Okay, plenty of time. Okay, so we're going to just keep repeating this. We're going to provoke and just kill time. Why the hell are you wearing sunglasses in a basement? And whenever the beg fails, we're going to go with a lie instead. So let's try beg again. Perhaps you aren't familiar with the concept of torture. So that's the problematic part. So now we need to, now we need to actually execute our lie, which is like 100%. So we'll do that. Um, we're just people depressed by the holistic empire. We are the resistance and will overthrow your empire. Makes sense, doesn't it? I don't know. Next question. Damn, I have to take a shit. So we actually survived the wall, which I've never done before. Or we had Jack survive the wall. Jack can be pulled apart here, and you'll still, um, be able to continue the mission. But it's nice to have two people so that you can alternate the provocations. Alright, Alexander, I told you we shouldn't have attended that jalapeno party. See you tomorrow, amigos. You know what they sh say, eat fire, shit tears. That's a, a great expression that I've never heard before, but I like it. Okie dokie. So what did we get there? Did we gain... I think I gave myself a... Healing kit, didn't I? You know, I miss I miss Everdusk Headquarters. Shh, don't even mention that name while we're in here. Remember, whatever happens, never ever confess our true identities. I know, I know, cut me some slack, man. I've never had Jack live this long. Alright, Liam, what have you got for me this time? You don't look like shit. Oh, sorry, you do look like shit. Don't you die on me, damn it. Don't worry, Abraham here won't let me die. Good, you need to support each other. Teamwork will make the torture a lot easier to withstand. Alright, so what did he give me? Um, what should I bring you next? Well, that depends on what you brought me this time. I forgot what it was. I think it was a healing kit, so I should be at full HP, so I'll take information next time. Gotcha. We're a little bit out of sync here. But yeah, he, he gave me a healing kit. Um, this is fine. We still have a few conf confessions left as well. So to be at full HP here is pretty good. So he's going to bring me information next. 
So we should try to not take very much damage if possible. Dooby doo, dooby da, dooby doo, yeah. Dooby baby, dooby ah. Man, I've missed me some karaoke action. Do you like karaoke? I'm not gonna do that um, because I can't sing. Do you like games? I'm really into gambling games myself. Okay, so this is the centerpiece of this whole mission. Are you familiar with the old gunpowder weapons? Well, this is a seven-barreled lucky revolver. It's been in my family for centuries. Old fellas from Earth had a game called Russian Roulette. I don't know what Russian means. Must be the guy who invented it. Doesn't matter. What matters is what happens when I slide one bullet inside the barrel. Point this baby at your face and ask a question. If I like what you're saying, I won't pull the trigger. Either way, you'll be in the hands of Lady Luck. Are you ready? For one out of seven chances of boom, how did you manage to enter our space lab? So, if we don't confess or have a successful lie, he pulls the trigger. Now, I'm not a gambler. I like to play it safe, you know. Put the, my savings into low yield, but guaranteed low percentage uh, mutual funds and stuff like that. I'm not playing the penny stocks or day trading on the Forex exchange and uh, with my ATM machine. Anyway, um, but I do like to roll the dice a little bit here because it gives us some leeway. So we're getting information next, which means we should be able to get a few successful lies. So what I'm thinking is that um, we, we take some time to think. Hey, are you deaf? Here we go. Showtime. All right, we're alive. For one out of six chances of boom, is there some kind of secret entrance in our space lab that I'm not aware of? Now, I've never been shot in the face in this game, but I have to imagine it would suck really badly to be shot in the face uh, after you've already invested 25 minutes into this mission. That being said, I think that's what they want you to feel. They want you to feel like it would suck really bad. So I'm gonna think again. Hey, are you deaf? Showtime! Okay, that made me wince in real life. I'm very scared. For one out of five chances of boom, how did you sneak into the lab? What's our lie percentage? 71. I'm gonna take it. Our hacker guy obliterated the system controlling your emergency exits in a matter of minutes. You should work on that. Okay, it makes sense, doesn't it? I don't know. Next question. For one out of five chances of boom, what do you plan to do with the intel you stole from our database? I'm gonna have Jack provoke Alexander now so we don't have to roll the dice too much more. Did you dress yourself or did Irving pick out your pants for you? Oh! Okay. Uh, provocation doesn't work with Jack anymore, apparently. Let's reset the fun. For one out of seven chances of headshot, why does your organization need our intel? Stop spinning the barrel. You're freaking me out. Um, I almost want to confess, but I think I'm going to beg instead and maybe we'll get super lucky. I don't think I can resist much longer. Perhaps you aren't familiar with the concept of torture. Oh, thank God. For one out of five chances of boom, you won't steal a car, you won't kill a baby. Piracy is a crime. Confess your plans. There's no point in thinking because we're going to have 100% um, lie chance in a second anyway. I, I don't know why provocation doesn't work with Jack. Let's try another beg. Please stop or I'll die. Perhaps you're not familiar with the concept of torture. Oh, thank God. Bah, I've had enough. Okay, so basically, I'm pretty sure that on that one, you're just meant to have balls of steel. Okay, so that that's very lucky, I think. I'm not sure if those are actually dice rolls or if you're not if you can actually go toe to toe and uh, never get shot if it's not actually based on probability, but man, it, it makes you think every time. Jack, don't you ever miss having a family? I'm not that kind of man. Fighting for Constellar Federation, ECUK, Xenolifer, that's more than a decade of fighting. Don't you think we've done enough for this universe? You're right. You should retire to a nice place once we get out of this mess. Yeah, but what about you? I just don't see myself on a couch. Uh, couches still exist in the future. No Russia, apparently. Man, I spent the day hidden in the airway watching holistic baseball matches. That shit is sick, but pretty rad. You should try to get some tickets for when we get out. You can count on me. What should I bring you? So we, we're just going to gain information. So I say we take a, a healing kit. And, you know, you know how I, I like to do this. Just alternate them. But this is especially good because now I can lie relatively early if I need to. Take a lot of damage and then still get up to pretty high HP. So I could like lie and then think, 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 and then get full HP and have a lie ready for the next level. I hope you don't think that violence is my only resource. I'm not ashamed of hurting my guests as I have acquired a great set of skills. There was this cyborg guy we had to interrogate once. He was a human once, but with so many implants, he was more machine than man at that point. The son of a bitch had the ability to disconnect his pain receivers at will. And yeah, he could die just the same as everybody else, but it's difficult to make someone fear death if they can't feel shit. Want to know how I made him talk? We became friends. Yeah, simple as that. Since pain wasn't going to do the job, I went with love. 
such good times. We ended up talking about this and that, and bit by bit I got some useful information out of him. Not enough to satisfy my boss, but enough to capture the poor bastard's sister and tear her ribs out in front of the man. Man, that was a masterpiece. Actual cyborg tears. The good old days, but let's focus on the task at hand. So if this guy's just punching me, I'm basically not scared at all. I'll take a turn to think. And uh, they're gonna they're gonna punch me a little bit here. What are they bringing next? They're bringing um, healing kits. So yeah, we can we can take a lot of damage. Uh, so I think we'll take a turn to maybe provoke. What this means is that this will probably be like a long day. I think we'll take a turn to provoke with Jack as well. Just keep the uh, damage spread out. Take another turn to provoke with Jack. And then I think we'll take a turn to actually beg with Jack and see if we get super lucky. Oh, okay. Perhaps you're not familiar with the concept of torture. Um, I'm going to provoke... I'm going to beg with Burden, I guess. All right. So they're going to punch us both again. Playing a little fast and loose here, but now I'm going to lie with 100% um, confidence. We wanted to fund our cause by selling classified information. It makes sense, doesn't it? I don't know. Next question. What were you looking at in our lab? So now we're going to think and try to get our uh, thinking or our lie chance as high as possible before the next level. What did you steal? We're going to think again. Hey, are you deaf? Remember, we have healing kits coming. Why were you interested in our research? Let's, let's take a turn to beg. Please stop or I'll die. That won't work. Now answer. So that's like your neutral role. Let's beg. Perhaps you aren't familiar with the concept of torture. Damn, that was didn't work out very well. Um, let's try another beg. Please stop or I'll die. Perhaps you're not familiar with the concept of torture. Okay. Um, we're in a problematic situation here. We're going to try a provocation with burden. Because otherwise Jack will die. Maybe that'll end the day. It didn't. So I think we actually... I've, I've screwed myself. We have to confess. We stole your research about the Medusa virus. Interesting. So you live on board a spaceship, always on the run. You're Abraham Burden and Jack Man Maslow, old dogs from the Constellar Federation. You stole the deadly Medusa virus. But there's some things that still bug me. Thankfully, otherwise we would be dead right now. So let's take a turn and we'll beg. I don't think I can resist. Okay, we have plenty of time. Tell me everything about your leader. That's great because it gives me a chance to think and get a super high lie percentage for the next uh, day. Who is your leader and what is he planning? I think we'll take a turn to... Um, Provoke with Jack, just for the guaranteed damage to him, but no damage to Burden. Good! Alexander, my back is killing me. Let's call it a day. See, I don't like having to hurt you either. But hell, if you want to play the hero, it's my duty to beat the ever-living shit out of you. I hope you understand. You want to sit? We can switch places whenever you want. Okay. So I don't think that was the last day. But progress has been made. We'll be fully healed, and we ask for information next time, and we already have a very good lie chance. They seem to do this a lot. They even have a special room with a huge drainage trench in the floor. I'm afraid of moving one of my chair's legs and falling over. Hey, that sounds like an escape plan. Don't. <laughs> okay. So I think we only have a few more days of torture left at this point, which is great. I found a library. Do you want me to get something for you to read? Oh, yes. Fuck meds. Let's fight them with culture. Okay, I see you're not in the mood for humor. So we want information next. I think we have at least one more confession that we can make, I think. But I don't want to be too dicey with it, as you might expect. Um, Alright. So we've got to at least survive another day or two. I know it seems like we haven't been through 19 days yet. Oh, now I'm on the wall. Aw, oh, shit. I don't like that very much. Because now if I die, I'm pretty sure that's just it. I've never gotten to the point where I've actually ended up on the wall. Did you have a good night? You know, those wooden chairs are shit, sorry. Not long ago we had a pair of, a pair of comfy armchairs, but our boss told us we were sending, spending too much time at the dry cleaner. Now we just shoot some water on them and poof, we're done. Alexander gave these babies some varnish recently. So try not to shit yourself too much. We won't be feeding you in any case, so I guess it won't be a problem. Anyway, your leader's name is something like Crappy Rebel, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so we're going to do a lot of provocation with Jack here. How many hours did you spend at the gym? Oh, it's the burning one. Which actually might be a good thing. Um, let's keep provoking for now. Do you take off that ridiculous helmet before going to sleep? Well, that hurts a little bit. Um, who's your boss? So we'll just again do a provocation with Jack. So you got tired from your job at the circus. See, that doesn't hurt us, thankfully. The first one doesn't, at least. And I think we'll provoke again. Did you dress yourself or did Irving pick out your pants for you? Very funny. Um, who is your leader and what is he planning? So we're going to start with a provocation. Get tired from your job at the circus. Then we're going to lie. And we have a 96% chance. Our leader is Brian Kernsmith, also known as the Empire Destroyer. 
Makes sense, doesn't it? I don't know. Next question. Who do you work for? Oh, man, the glove's still here. Um, I think we'll, ba we'll try one bag. Don't do a big boy. You're close to killing me. Okay, okay. We have plenty of time to breathe. Tell me about your organization. Um, we're getting information next. So I almost feel okay with just a provocation. Kill buy some time. And end of the day. Congratulations, you survived another day. You won't give us a prize. Of course, what do you want? The torture wall or the axe? All right. So we get information. We probably could use a healing kit, but, you know, we don't really have too much to do about that right now. Are you all right, Burden? Don't worry about me. Save your strength. How do you always stay so cool? It's like you were born to survive. Are you trying to mend my wounds with sweet talk, Jack? Well, honestly, I think Jack's the one that's in a little bit more of a tricky position right now. I'm not the only one who's got this far. Consider yourself a true survivor too, Corporal. Now that's a pep talk. All right. I think this next day might be our last day, honestly. I hope so, because if I lose at this point, I'm going to be uh, in a bad place. All right. Next time, you should give me a healing kit. Gotcha. Okay, I got you some useful intel. They seem to be pretty paranoid about rebels and resistance initiatives. If I can avoid making a confession, I would love to avoid making a confession, because I don't know how many pieces of information we're allowed to confess. I've already confessed three. Uh, so he's just talking about how Alexander tortures hamsters, because Alexander's kind of an asshole. Now, does he take the wrench or the hammer? Wrench is bad. What does he do? That's the... That's the axe. Okay. I've never seen the axe before. I'm sorry, guys, but this is when we get serious. If you don't tell me what I want, I'm going to cut your friend's arm off. It's as simple as that. Not many people dare to challenge the Holistic Empire, so where are you idiots from? Um... What if we provoke? Come on, hit me, Blondie. All right, um, you should be proud of your actions. Just recover that little pride you have left and tell me your faction's name. I think Jack's arm might be in a terrible position here. Let's, let's lie, 77. We are just people oppressed by the Holistic Empire. We are the resistance and will overthrow your empire. It makes sense, doesn't it? I don't know, next question. How did you manage to enter our space lab? Um, we'll beg. Please stop or I'll die. Perhaps you're not familiar with the concept of torture. Ooh, sorry about that one, Jack. Um, are you sure your shitty terrorist secrets are worth an arm? I'll let you rest, but you better start preparing a good confession for tomorrow, because tomorrow I'm going to be working on your eyes. I don't know how I'm going to fight back against that. I'm sorry, Jack. I tried, man. Sometimes I wonder what we're doing with our lives. Yeah, these chairs make you wonder about a lot of things. I mean, we've been with Xenolifer for three years now, and of course, we didn't join them to defend their cause, but I ended up liking them. Xenolifer are good people with good intentions, but that's not the only thing that matters. What do you mean? It's all about their methods. You may want to save the world, but great ideals come with a great, or big question. How much blood has to be spilled in order to succeed? Well, I hope that this healing kit can give me, uh, you know, a brand new arm. How are you holding up? Well, we're alive, but we'll need a vacation. Do you want to talk about, um, you know, how uh, Jack's arm looks? I guess we'll take a... We're going to take a, a second healing kit after that. Hey, okay, we made it. And we got an achievement as well. You can't see it, but I'm pretty sure it's just the achievement for having beaten the mission. Oh, that's so satisfying that we actually managed to get it done on the first try. So we found Sergeant Burden. Positive ID on Corporal Jack Maslow. There's an unidentified third subject. What should we do? Leave him. Your top priority is to get the sergeant out of here. Understood. Moving back to ECUK headquarters. All right, so we got rescued, but uh, Liam still ends up being uh, stuck there, and our, you know, undercover operation is being, perhaps, uh, you know, the cover's been blown here. I really like that mission. I'm super glad we survived. All right, your attitude was coward. Wow, uh, not many people chose the coward's way out. I'm proud of that. We did. Uh, we were in the minority that actually allowed Jack to survive. Jack kept his arm for most people, though. Uh, Jack got most damage, and as opposed to uh, the average person gave Burden more damage. We demanded medicine and information the most, and that's normal, and we confessed three times. Hmm. Many people didn't confess at all, but three times... Oh, three times is the norm. Okay, well, the average. All right. Well, we're going to um, go through this dialogue here just so we can make sure that the game actually saves. I've been burned by that a couple of times in the past. 
Um, but then we'll we'll do mission three on the, the next level, or the next video, I should say. Welcome back, Sergeant Burden. Allow me to say on ECUK's behalf, we're glad you came back in one piece, but it's time to get back to work. Your failure in infiltrating Xenolifer's ranks and sabotaging their goals has changed the rules of the game. This has left us vulnerable. Xenolifer can now potentially commit a biological act using the Medusa virus at any time. Don't even start. Listening to your excuses is what put us in this situation to begin with. We have to be ready to fight any biological threat. That's your main and only objective right now. Is that clear? Yes, sir. On your next mission, you'll have to spend several months on the surface of Senecios. If you read the mission briefing, you'll know that Sen oh, Senecios is the homeworld of the Medusa virus. You'll be leading an Everdust science team whilst occupying the planet. Your mission won't be complete until you find a cure for the Medusa virus. Sounds more like a punishment to me. Do you have a problem with your assignment, Corporal Maslow? Two soldiers to look after three scientists and a robot? Please. I guess Jack got his arm back. Alright, if I... I see you already met your team, let me introduce them to you. Sarah Gaynor, specialist in psychiatrics and brain genetics. Uh, after all we've heard, it's a pleasure to meet the legend at last, Sergeant. Uh, Paul Zanace, expert in bacteriology, bionics, and the former chief of the counter-viral department of the Constellar Federation. Nice to meet you, gentlemen. Our job on Sinaikos is just as important as fighting terrorists. Don't undermine the mission by taking it as a punishment. They won't, Doctor. Donald Gaynor, specialist in robotics and electromechanics. I'll be in charge of the maintenance of the ship and our equipment. Also, as I told the commander earlier, I'm bringing with us this experimental robot model I've named Brandon. Experimental in what way? Well, it's just a discarded project of the Constellar Federation. Essentially, Brandon is an empathetic droid. Uh, he w or emphatic droid, I guess. He was designed to analyze human emotions and status to try and please its owner and guests. The project was deemed a failure, though. Since a couple of years, the empathic module became overridden with its owner's personality, and the droid suffers an existential crisis with undesired consequences. This model has been customized by me by formatting its brain once a year. I can promise Brandon is totally safe. Also, it's not for pleasure. When requested, he'll give us various readings of our performance, moods, and morale throughout a mission that can help uh, notably improve our productivity. Fair enough. I'm sad to hear that, but I'll do my best, sir. Come on, Sarge, don't be mean to him. You may end up liking him. Gentlemen, you'll have to talk about their personal details on the ship. Dismissed. All right. So we have a dog here. Uh, I'm going to skip over some of this, unfortunately, but um, when the dog brings our uh, stick back, I'm going to begin the mission. So let's uh, go back to work here. Gorgeous pixel art on that screen. And then she said, I thought it was a mercurial snake. Man, you are sick. Welcome back, gentlemen. How's the research going, Doc? Excellent. Sarah and I detected what causes paralysis within the Medusa virus. It attacks the muscles with a parasitarian live net, but it also freezes the user, in inducing a chemical coma. It then keeps the vital functions running to create a perfect environment for spores to start growing in the victim's body. Sarah and I reduced the amount of possible compounds to five, so we're pretty close to finding a cure. We'll probably be able to leave Sinaikos in a couple of months. I'm going to skip through some of this because we're going to have a major, yeah, interaction here with Chuck Norris and Liam. Hello, everybody. Abraham, man, how are you? Or should I call you Sergeant Burden? Don't worry, man. You had a job to do. No hard feelings. I'm glad you made it out of the Holistic Empire prison after all. You and your team will come in handy right now for Xenolifer. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you heard you say you're researching a cure for the Medusa virus. Cut the crap, Liam. What do you want? How rude, Jack. After all we've been through, I hoped you'd be glad to see me. To answer your question, though, I want you to give us the cure for the Medusa virus, and I want it now. Excuse us, Mr. Liam, but we are far from discovering one at this point. There's still a lot of work to do. Oh, that's too bad, especially since I'm in a little bit of a rush right now. Fine, I'll tell you what. Discover a cure by tomorrow, and you won't die. Don't underestimate yourself, lady. The threat of death can be a wonderful motivator. What's that they say? Necessity is the mother of invention, no? Shaman can provide that motivation. Shaman? Indeed, C4 has been motivating humanity for centuries. Jack, calm down, Liam. Listen to me. You're a reasonable man. I'm sure we can find a peaceful resolution here. I know you, Burden. You can survive this just like everything else. After all, you're a legend, aren't you? Time to prove it. So they are going to drop some C4 there. Uh, and this explosion has unfortunately uh, left us with an open Medusa virus canister as well as a bunch of rubble at the far right of the screen. Oh my god, we're going to die, aren't we? Everybody calm down, Liam is not an assassin. He wouldn't kill us for mere revenge. Tell me you're not defending that son of a bitch. Don't lose your cool, Jack. If he wanted us dead, we'd be dead. We better start working fast and smart. Doctor, how much time do we have? Based on our research so far, we'll be dead in about 27.5 hours. That's plenty of time. How much debris do we have blocking the exit? 3,712 kilograms exactly, sir. Okay, that's a lot of work, but if we cooperate, we can dig all that shit out in time. You forget the fact that we're all infected. Even if we get out, we'll be dead. Understood? Then your mission is to find a cure in less than 48 hours. That's impossible. Um, well, there are some lines that can be crossed in order to speed up the investigation. 
Um, human experimentation. We can't just blindly shoot random compounds into ourselves. Well, we can choose between a certain death or a possible death. I don't know about you, but I'll take my chances. All right. Start digging and follow the doctor's instructions. We have to avoid overworking ourselves, and this situation being well rested is just as important as working. I think Sarah and I can produce some accelerants through the use of chemical computers. So basically, we can have adrenaline as well as uh, sedatives. Um, and they are going to produce an anecdote as well. Step one, produce an anecdote. Step two, inject it into someone. Step three, pray. Finally, step four, if the subject endures the shot, we'll analyze their blood and see what went right and what went wrong. Okay. Fair enough. What about the team? They work in 30 minute intervals. The power supply seems to have been damaged, uh, but we can get Brandon to... I'm skipping over the dialogue just because at this point there's a ton of it. Um, we can get Brandon to basically keep the power going, which is good. Um, and we have a defibrillator, which we can use to jolt people out of paralysis. Okay, I think I think we're ready. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode. As always, thanks for watching. I much appreciate the support in the series so far. If you guys are enjoying it, it helps me out a great deal. And uh, well, there's nothing more to be said. Subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, Gods will be watching on a daily basis until the series is over. And of course, if you want to pick up the game, which I would recommend because I like it a great deal, check it out on Steam. There will be a link in the video description below. But as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.